Um, that stuff is the most flexible. In other words, if you eat something that contains omega-6s, oxidized omega-6s are very common. What you're gonna get is you're gonna get white fat cells that are made preferentially of inflammatory causing things. This is why keto oftentimes fails because people eating the wrong kind of fat or like, hey, it was fried, I'll eat it because it doesn't have a carb. Don't eat fried stuff, newsflash, especially if you're eating a lot of fat, eat clean, undamaged fats. That's a core bulletproof diet tenet. And when people read that and like, what, you mean, it's not just the type of fat, it's how the fat was treated? Yeah, that actually matters. Mr. Bulletproof Executive himself, the king of biohacking, Dave Asprey, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. I'm happy to be on. Anything keto is worth talking about. Not always worth doing, though. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to do it the wrong way and how to do it the right way. In your book, which I have right in front of me right here, Superhuman, uh, can't recommend this enough. I know a lot of my audience have already read this, but if you're watching the YouTube video, I have it here. You have seven pillars of aging, and pillar number two is the primary focus I'd like to get into to start this interview to talk all about the mighty mitochondria, the cell membrane, and why it's important to get the right fats for this whole orchestra that we have in the human body. So could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, when I first tried ketosis, it was in the 90s. And I used this book from a guy called Robert Atkins, who you could say invented ketosis. Uh, uh, well, I now have the first edition of his book, and it came out the year I was born in 1972. So guys, we're like such cool keto people, except come on, if you do them, was that like 50 years ago? Yep. Because this went through things, but it was a fad. And the reason it was a fad is the same reason that modern ketosis is also a fad, and we're all gonna look back on this 10 years from now and be like, what the hell are we doing? Now you're saying, Dave, do you know it says keto above my head on my thing? I'm keto camp. That's okay, we're gonna fix that in this episode and just in the movement of keto, because it's time. And what happened to me is I had 100 pounds to lose. So I ate my fried cream cheese balls, uh, my bacon, my pork rinds, my NutraSweet, my saccharin, and magically I lost 50 pounds. It was solid, right? I actually felt better too. And then the other 50 pounds would not go away. And if you go back to you know, be right, right, actually as I was starting Bulletproof 10 years ago, you'd go to like a low carb event. And it was all these incredibly obese people with loose skin. And you're like, you're fat. Okay, I can say this. I was a 300 pounder. I have stretch marks to prove it, right? But they were all like, yeah, but I used to weigh 400 pounds. Now I weigh 300 pounds. Isn't it great? Like I lost 100 pounds. But then I plateaued. So I must be eating too many carbs. So I went from you know, 10 grams of carbs down to 5 grams of carbs. But I'm still not losing weight. I must be getting too many carbs. Now, we've all seen this before. What we've seen is, Diet soda. I'm still fat. I better drink even more diet soda. The diet soda makes you fat. Okay. The keto diet, as it's often implemented, makes you lose a bunch of weight and it also causes inflammation. And so what's going on here? It makes it really confusing because as human beings, we're like, okay, if something's good, let's just do it. So the vegan diet's good. Let's just be vegan and then just watch it wreck your health, right? That happened to me as well in my whole journey here. And that's what led me to write the Bulletproof Diet which was, I will, I will call it the first modern diet that used ketosis surgically, but cyclically, and also accounted for inflammatory toxins. Because it took me 10 years to learn how to lose the other 50 pounds I had to lose. Because it wasn't about carbs or not carbs. It was about different carbs do different things, different fats do different things, and different proteins do different things. And so you get these like keto cookies out there, uh, and I'm not calling out any one particular brand, you know, some are decent, some aren't, but a lot of the time, like, oh, the cheap ones, they're made with gluten because gluten's a protein. It's not a carb. Like, do you really want to eat a gluten bomb on your keto diet? Is it going to cause inflammation? Of course it is. So let's peel back all that and just go into the fats. And this in Superhuman, Superhuman is not a keto book. It's a, how do I live to at least 180? Newsflash, if you're not in ketosis, some of the time you won't live to 180. So ketosis is massively important. And if you want to lose weight, ketosis is massively important. And I write about this. And the proof there, people have lost a million pounds on the Bulletproof diet. And we have a couple hundred million cups of Bulletproof coffee served. Uh, it's, it, it's got legs. It's not a fad, th this idea. But if we allow keto to go into that 
if you eat a carb again, you're a bad person. I'm a keto bro. It, it doesn't work. It works for a little while and you end up sounding identical to a vegan, right? And you become a zealot and you're like, my hammer, everything's a nail because I have a hammer. No, like you're supposed to be an artist. You have a paintbrush, you have a scalpel if you're a surgeon and, and you carefully craft what you wanted to craft, which is you. So let's talk about crafting cell membranes in the body. The cell membranes in your body are composed of tiny droplets of fat. You know, in high school biology, I used to think they're like a baggie. They're not. They're little drops of fat. So what are they made out of? Well, it depends. And it depends where the cell membranes are found in the body. And this is the new stuff that isn't a part of the keto world yet. That's a part of the anti-aging world that I'm working to bring them together. And that was why that was one of the big parts of the book. If you eat fat, we now have the ability to tell you where fat in the body, in your mouth, goes in the body. And you've got to look at everything you eat from these two different lenses. Actually, there's three, but there's two big ones for my point here. One of them is, is it going to be used as a building block or is it going to be used as fuel? Right. And then the third lens is, what toxins does it have in it that will inhibit it from being used or that have a hidden cost? And if you, if you account for those three things, you've done it right. Because if it's going to be used as a building block, you included micronutrients and all that sort of stuff. And as a building block, what percentage of your body is starch or carbohydrate? Less than 1%. There you go. In fact, there's a chart in the first book I published called The Better Baby Book. I'm trying to convince mothers don't eat a lot of sugar because your babies aren't made out of sugar. Like there's a graph shaped like a baby or shaped like a human, like what percent? It's less than 1%. So you don't need carbs as a building block, except there's these little annoying things. Um, we used to call it junk sugar as scientists that cover your cells on top of the fatty membrane. They're called polysaccharides. And it turns out they're vital for immune, immune function. There's just not that much of it. So you do need some carbs and your gut bacteria eat carbs and turn them into fat if you eat the right kind of carbs. So there's ketogenic carbs, yeah, there are. And that really makes people mad. It's called prebiotics, it shouldn't make you mad. But um, it makes the FDA mad because the labeling on the back of things is it has to say it contains X amount of carb. You're like, but the carbs don't go into the body. What is that? Anyway, that's a labeling issue. So now, the science that just came out in Superhuman is if you eat fat, there's about a two-year half-life of fat in the body. So if your cell membranes are composed of fat that has fat-soluble toxins in it or the wrong kinds of fat, and you eat really good fat in the ratios you want your body to be in, it'll take you two years. to It's approximately two years, like 768 days or something like that, but pretty close to that. 785, whatever. Um, it'll, uh, it'll end up getting you to the point where half your cell membranes are healthy and functioning. And if you do it again, you'll, you'll get there some more. So you got to look at the types of fats. There's, I like to call them foundational building block fats. And this is right out of superhuman. That's saturated fats. Saturated fats are awesome. And they're awesome because they don't oxidize and they don't break easily. And they're stable. You, you want to have some stability in your cell membranes. Then you have monounsaturated fats. And those things are, are sort of like the, the things that, that fill in between these big blocks uh, if you're building a wall. And then you have these omega-3s and omega-6s, a much smaller percentage of the fat that's in your cell membranes. And those things are um, essentially the very final finishing that you'd put uh, on, on a wall to make it work really well. And you need a little bit of lubrication. So you look at those as lubricants. You need these big bricks, the grout, and a little bit of, of stuff to let them slide so they can work and things can go in and out. Uh, but we've demonized saturated fats in most of the world. Anyone in keto knows Bulletproof Coffee. Gee, why do I put butter in there? 45% of your cell membrane fat, the highest percentage of any kind of fat is saturated fat. The only fat your body can make on board is a saturated fat. So we can manufacture palmitic acid from scratch because we need it. Guess what part of the body has to have 45% saturated fat no matter what? It's your brain, right? And it, it will not allow that to deviate. All the rest of the fat in your body, if you eat fats of different amounts, it'll change the ratios depending on where it's going to go. And funny enough, the white fat in your body, the stuff that's around your organs um, or you know, your visceral fat the, or the stuff that's just under your skin, your subcutaneous fat, um, that stuff is the most flexible. In other words, if you eat 
something that contains omega-6s, oxidized omega-6s are very common. What you're going to get is you're going to get white fat cells that are made preferentially of inflammatory causing things. And this is why keto oftentimes fails because people eating the wrong kind of fat or like, hey, it was fried, I'll eat it because it doesn't have a carb. Don't eat fried stuff, newsflash, especially if you're eating a lot of fat, eat clean, undamaged fats. That's a core bulletproof diet tenet. And when people read that and they're like, wait, you mean it's not just the type of fat, it's how the fat was treated? Yeah, that actually matters because that fat becomes a part of you as a building block and in keto, it's also a fuel source. And when you're eating carbs, they're just a fuel source other than maybe a little bit of polysaccharide and they're manipulating your gut, your gut bacteria. Um, so those perspectives are different. And then for protein, if you're breaking protein down to make energy or even to make sugar, and you're doing that for long periods of time, you're going to get ammonia and you're going to get metabolic byproducts that are, that are not good for you, which is why occasionally having some carbs is good. You go in and out of ketosis. And it's why people are like, but Dave, you, I saw you eating some sushi. Yeah, it has some white rice in it. And when you cook and cool white rice, you get resistant starch, which feeds your gut bacteria. And I poured brain octane on there, which is the C8 MCT. The whole reason anyone uses C8 MCT is my work. What you end up with there is I still had ketones at the end of the meal and I had carbs in my body. And magic stuff happens there. And at that point, that's what I call an energy fat, the MCTs. It, they're generally not used for building cell membranes. They're just burned as fat. And you end up saying, oh, I can now decide what's going to happen inside my body. So the brain fixes saturated fat. The brain varies the amount of monounsaturates that are in it. And it very highly varies the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3s. And you get all the, the vegan crowd um, who will say, and because I was a raw vegan for a long time, I, I would eat gravel. I, I'm not you know, a, a dogmatic about that. I'm just going to call out what doesn't work. And straight up keto forever doesn't work. Like if you want to wake up without a kickstand as a guy and you want a woman with a messed up cycle and poor sleep, just go keto and stay keto. It is, is routine. It happens over and over and over. And if you want the same things to happen, go vegan and stay vegan. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen. Totally, totally, Dave. There's so much alignment here. I, I teach the same thing, and it and it's weird, right? Because I'm Keto Camp is my company, but it, I teach the same exact. I've learned a lot of it from yeah. you and Dr. Pompa, of course, to flex in and out. When we look back at ancient culture, we know that all of our ancestors they did ketosis. They were in ketosis because mm -hmm. of their environment, but they didn't stay in ketosis. It was not. There's not one diet that any culture stuck with long term for yeah. several, several years, their environment dictated what they ate. And that's the same thing with keto. They didn't come across honey or fruit and say, oh no, we're, we're keto, we're not gonna eat that. So I teach these principles, I teach it to my female clients who are having their monthly cycle. I actually teach them, hey, let's get out of ketosis five to seven days before your period. Let's not do too much fasting. Let's get that insulin spike to convert these specific hormones so you can have mm -hmm. a healthy monthly cycle and then we go right back into it. So continue, preach on my brother. Okay, so these are the things that are missing from the world of keto and it sort of disturbs me. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, what do I wanna call them, um, spin-off ideas from Bulletproof. People saying, oh, I'm, I'm gonna make a, a, another functional coffee, and, but this one, I'll just put in coconut oil because it has MCT oil. Legally, coconut oil is 52% MCT oil. Now, functionally, most of the MCT in there doesn't act like medium chain triglycerides. It doesn't convert to ketones. It's, uh, it's called lauric acid, and it acts just like corn oil in your liver, and that it doesn't do anything special. It's better than corn oil, uh, because at least it, it doesn't oxidize the way corn oil does, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't have the energy fat things in it, but on the label, it's like 52% MCTs. And then they say, I'll use milk protein isolate, which <laughs> is like a cheap and dirty protein that you don't really want to eat, and it's not organic, so it's full of hormones and probably glyphosate from the food from the animals. And like, that is not drinkable. Like, I, I wouldn't feed that to my pigs. And I, yes, that, I raise pigs. Isn't yeah. that insulinogenic? Very insulinogenic too? Yeah, totally. And what is, it's composed by someone who said, oh, I hit a price point of $1.99. Woohoo, look at me. But what you, guess what you did? You did it wrong. The, the science is wrong. And there, so there's a, a whole bunch of people saying, well, it officially is keto. Or they're saying, well, it's, I just add a little bit of sugar. Right? So you end up like, actually, that's just like ice cream pretty much. Um, so, but then they try to put it in the keto category uh, and it, it's a problem because you, the quality of the ingredients matters because of the quality of, of what's going on with, uh, with your gut and your gut bacteria and the type of sweeteners you use and all these things. So I, I wish that we could get people back to paying attention to the quality of the fat. 
And then it comes to the quality of the animal. Um, the, the reason grass fed is, is such a big thing is largely bulletproof coffee. There was a global shortage of grass fed butter a, a few I years remember. ago. From this. I remember, you remember that? that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did that. I'm sorry, guys. Someone went to jail smuggling. I think it was a couple Norwegians smuggling butter into Sweden or Swedes smuggling into Norway. I'd forget who was smuggling for which country to which, but they had like a container of butter in the back of a truck or something like a, a big container truck and got stopped and arrested. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, the, the drug syndicates are getting into butter smuggling. Um, you sure that wasn't you, Dave. Um, uh, I have no comments, uh, but my, my Swedish passport's not valid anymore. I don't have one. Uh, so but that kind of a thing, why grass fed? Because this, the fatty acid ratios are different and because it doesn't have toxins in it. Why do I live on a farm and raise my own sheep and pigs? Because animal fat is so precious. Uh, um, but it, only if the animals are fed the right stuff, because those same rules about if you eat it, it changes your fat. If they eat it, it changes their fat. So part of the keto message has to be really militant. Don't eat industrial meat. It will wreck your ketosis because you will get glyphosate and you get antibiotics. And now your gut bacteria will be wrecked and your cell membranes will get wrecked by the glyphosate that's in it. So it's off your diet, especially the fatty cuts. And the way you stay in ketosis, eat the short ribs. My God, short ribs from a grass-fed cow are a religious experience. They're covered in fat. The pork belly. I only sell half my bacon at the local market from my farm because I eat the rest of it. And it's a religious experience when you have clean fat from an animal that was raised ethically. Uh, and so you actually want to spend less or you want to eat less meat and spend more on it if that's what it takes to get grass-fed meat. And you can supplement that with grass-fed butter, which is dirt cheap. It's very affordable on a per calorie basis and it has the right kinds of fats. The rule in the Bulletproof diet that I would recommend for all keto is of your fat calories, half of them should be saturated because that's what your body wants, right? At least half. And then above that, you want monounsaturated. And then above that, your omega-3s and krill and fish eggs. That's why I put those in the Bulletproof uh, uh, Omega-3 supplement. Those are preferential sources. From an anti-aging perspective, you want to get about a four to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 uh, in your cell membranes. And they measure your blood. There's just one problem. And this is what came out in Superhuman. When you measure the blood, it doesn't tell you, that's what your red blood cells do in response to eating fat. It doesn't tell you what your white fat's doing or what you, the, the cell membranes in your heart or your brain look like. They have to take apart mice to figure out what's going on in there based on radioactive isotopes and things like that. So it's very fascinating how they're able to understand this. So you can still go by that four to one ratio. When I was testing out the Bulletproof Diet as I was writing it, I got my ratio down to 1.28 to one. So I suppressed my omega-6 dramatically that might be too far. We don't really know uh, where, that, where, where that is. I think four is about right, as long as your omega-6s are not damaged, which means right. you can soak your nuts, you can sprout your nuts, but if they're roasted or fried or something, not gonna work. If you're eating flax oil, you're probably screwed on that anyway, because flax basically goes bad as soon as it sees light. If you're gonna do that, you keep it in the freezer, you grind it right away, uh, keep it in the fridge, you eat it, but generally it's a drying oil in Ayurveda and I don't like flax, but for a few people, they actually need some flax oil. You just have to not have the pre-ground flax that you spoon some into your cereal and then bake it. That will destroy the oils and then you'll get those and you're going to see effects you don't want. And it's, it's one of the things, if it's omega-6 or omega-3, it belongs in the fridge and it doesn't belong in a pan, except maybe olive oil. I'll pour it on top of food after I cook it in a pan. So I'll cook in a little bit of butter, or bacon grease, low temperature cooked bacon. You, know, you kind of sweat it out of your bacon. You don't spit and fry it. Um, you cook something in that with, with water whenever you can to keep the temperature so it's more steamed. And then you pour the olive oil on the end because it is more damageable. And these are the things that are missing from keto, but that's what your body's gonna be built out of and burn for fuel is those things. Yeah, I love it. So, so valuable. So we have a few minutes left. And I want to just briefly touch upon something you already briefly mentioned, which was overcooking your foods, like eating charred meat, char grilled meat. Why, why it creates something called advanced glycation end products, which is a very appropriate acronym. Why is it bad to overcook our food and our food? And why are you such a big proponent <laughs> on eating food that's lightly cooked? Man, it pissed so many people off when I wrote this in the Bulletproof Diet. Uh, because uh, people say, it doesn't matter. I like my barbecue. How dare you? There's no evidence. I'm like, guys, the there's like hundreds of references in here. Like, how dare you say there's no evidence? Because you didn't look at the evidence. And 
what you find is that advanced glycation end products happen either when you eat sugar, your blood sugar goes up after a meal and the sugar browns your tissues. And this is a cross link between proteins that can't be undone. And once they're stuck together, they make free radicals. So you can brown your insides with the high sugar diet. But then you also can just eat them. And the number one source of that is overcooked food, whether it's something that you caramelized or something that you grill and char. And grilling and charring introduces other toxins that are rough on the liver, PAHs and all. And you can see it in your skin tone. You can see it in how your joints feel if you eat like heavily charred blackened meat uh, versus if you eat meat that's gently cooked. I go to the restaurant and I say, no char, right? And I cook it at home and we control the temperature. So you might get some browning, which tastes good, but it doesn't have to be a thick, heavy crust on your meat. Yes, it's delicious. You know what else is delicious? Heroin, I guess. I've never tried it, but that doesn't mean I want to eat it. Like you get to choose. French fries are delicious. They're just bad for you right? Cigarettes probably are delicious. I don't know. I don't smoke. But here's the deal. I don't care if it's delicious. I care what it's going to do for you. How are you going to feel when you're done? Right? So charring does that. And then I go into the science in superhuman, which I found really fascinating because there's parts of your cells that act basically as, um, as incinerators. Their job is to take proteins inside the cells, burn them up, use them uh, for energy, or just get rid of them, digest them. And advanced glycation end products clog them up. And one of the causes of aging is these things get clogged up. And then, well, what do you do? Think of an incinerator. You keep shoveling stuff in there that burns. You got no problem. But if you shovel little bits of metal in there that doesn't burn, eventually you can't shovel anything else in there. And there's no mechanism to clean that out other than killing the entire cell. And you end up getting senescent cells that are clogged up because their cell machinery doesn't work anymore because you ate a lot of charred stuff. It will make you older. And it's correlated with cancer because of what it does from probably the PAHs and other things when you eat it. So don't eat smoked and charred food. You want smoke? Get smoked salt and put it on your food. It'll still taste smoky. I'm sorry. I used to have an amazing smoking setup, an amazing grill, and I'm a master of that stuff. I actually don't do that anymore because I can measure a difference in my inflammation. And if you come to eat for dinner at my restaurant or at my house, you won't miss it because you can cook and it tastes amazing when you do this right. Well said, Dave. I want to acknowledge you for showing up in this world. I've learned so much from you over the years. I share your work with my community. I'm excited for your future books and the impact you're going to make, you're continuing to make in this world. And I want to thank you for the brilliant way you laid out keto like no other today. And I look forward to doing this again, Dave, and just keep changing the world, brother. Thank you. It's been an honor to be on Keto Camp and keep spreading the word. Keto is a, a tool. It's an amazing tool and it should be in everyone's toolkit. So keep doing your work. Will do, Dave. Have a great day. Thank you, brother. You got it. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Dave Asprey. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed already. If you're curious about doing keto the right way, I have 15 steps for you to do it the right way. Click this button right here, watch the next video, grab your pen and paper, and enjoy. See you soon.